Question is for the Premier. For many years, the Mildura community has lobbied for a residential drug and alcohol rehabilitation centre. In a recent report, Infrastructure Victoria recommended that a detox and rehab facility be built in the Mallee within five years. Chief Executive of the Pennington Institute, John Ryan, stated, quote, the data is clear. The overdose situation in Mildura appears to be getting worse. People are suffering and dying unnecessarily and all levels of government and society need to do more to keep them safe, unquote. And it's especially bad for our Aboriginal community which is at the forefront of this push. Over one Christmas New Year period alone, one local elder had to attend 10 funerals, all drug and alcohol related. Premier, we are Victorians too. This is literally a matter of life and death. How much longer should the Mallee expect to wait before a rehab facility on par with other major regional centres is a budget priority for this government? Call the Premier. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and I thank the member for Mildura for her question. Uh, in terms of drug and alcohol support, uh, whether that be residential facilities or other facilities, uh, we are very proud to have doubled the number of treatment beds across our state. Uh, this is not a matter of simply resting on the, the things that we've already achieved, but it's worth pointing out, I think, some of the investments that we have made. When we came to government, there were about 208 beds across the state. There are now more than 500. Uh, very substantial investments, very substantial investments, and not just in metropolitan Melbourne, but indeed to the point that the member for Mildura makes, in places like Corio, Terralgan, uh, my old hometown of Wang, and other parts of regional Victoria. We will continue. We, we will continue to invest in regional Victoria alcohol and other drug services for those uh, who, without those services and the specialist care that they offer. Cannot get out, can't get away from the clutches uh, of substance abuse and all the other damage and difficulty that can often finish in tragedy. Uh, these services are worth investing in. That's our record. There's a budget coming up, and I would simply say to the member for Mildura that her advocacy is always passionate. Her advocacy is always effective when it comes to so many things, particularly in relation to returning to the northwest of our state a public hospital, not a, not a for-profit money-making outfit as it was under the previous government, but a public hospital. But we know and understand, we know and understand, and I commend the member for Mildura, she asked a question very recently, she asked a question very well, and those opposites still arguing for privatised public health. For privatised public health. You'd think that the people of Mildura had made their decision. They'd made their preference clear. In fact, the people of Victoria have made their preference pretty clear as well. But I commend the member for Mildura on that broader point about her advocacy. Just, just a few weeks ago, I think, she was asking my good friend, the Minister for Health, about master planning, about cancer care. Not just content to return the hospital to public ownership, but to grow it, to make it better. I acknowledge, I acknowledge, and I'm grateful to the member for Mildura for, for her question, uh, for her representations and her advocacy, and I acknowledge that whilst we have achieved a lot in relation to alcohol and other drugs, particularly residential beds, we do need to do more. And I say to the uh, a member for Mildura, I'll have discussions with colleagues, uh, and I would hope that we can look favourably uh, upon the submission uh, that she's made uh, in the forthcoming budget. I'm a familiar juror on a supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Our nearest rehab service is Bendigo, a city with the same number of drug and alcohol patients but twice the population. Bendigo is a four-hour drive away. Melbourne's a six-hour drive away. Uh, granted, Melbourne is a one-hour flight, but that's only if you can afford it. And the last time we tried to book a flight at less than a week's notice, the Qantas flight was more than $700 each way. Passenger rail is not an option because the Liberal Party decommissioned our service in 1993. Around the same time, they referred to us as the toenails of the state. The situation is this. The most isolated Order. region in the state is the least equipped to deal with this scourge. Premier, would you be willing to sit down with me and local stakeholders so that we can put our case to you directly and discuss ways to advance this vital cause? Just before calling the Premier, during the answer to the last question, there are a few members who went very close to getting removed from the chamber. Just a warning, the Premier has the call. Uh, thank you, Speaker. And, well, I, I, won't, I won't laugh at that request as some opposite just were then. Instead, I'm happy to answer uh, the member for Mildura. I am more than happy 
to find time to meet with her uh, and any local stakeholders that she wants to uh, set up in a meeting so that I fully understand the need. I think I've got a pretty good sense of it. Uh, and I just say that, you don't go from 200 beds to more than 500 beds if you haven't got a pretty good sense that we need more beds. The question is, uh, we can do more, we can do better. We stand ready to do that. Uh, I thank the member for Mildura for her advocacy uh, and for the fact that she works hard to understand her community, to listen to her community and then to deliver for her community. It's been a long time since the people in Mildura had that. Had that. Yes, I will meet with you, absolutely. And hopefully we can get a positive outcome for the people of Mildura, and it'll be yet again, and indeed the broader region, uh, it'll be yet again another example of the independent member for Mildura getting the job done.